First, we're going to do a uh, black bean dip, and we're going to make baked pita chips uh, for dipping. Uh, and we're also going to make a quinoa fruit salad. So, we're going to work on the black bean dip first, just so it works out with time a little bit. So, what I've done uh, basically is I've taken some pita bread. You can use the small ones, you can use the large ones. I cut them in triangles. And basically, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this up to put in the oven for about five to ten minutes tops until they get crispy. On the recipe I gave you, um, you can brush these with olive oil. Um, there's a trick I've been using for years. Uh, it makes life a little easier. They actually sell pan in olive oil as well. So this actually makes them nice and crispy and you don't have to sit there and brush every single piece of um, piece of bread. So I just spray coat these a little bit with the pan and then we're going to throw these right in the oven in about five to ten minutes they're ready to go. So, let me just set the timer for this. Okay. Now, while that is going, in a food processor or blender, whichever one you have, um, actually what we're going to do is, I have onion, garlic, and I set a jalapeno pepper in the, uh, in the menu. Uh, today I'm actually using poblano because I wanted to make it a little bit spicier. You don't have to use uh, any kind of spice if you don't want to. So in a pan, we're just going to take the garlic, the onion, and the poblano pepper. And they can be rough chopped. They don't need to be fine chopped. You don't have to go crazy. Just a rough chop because they're all going to go. They're all going to go into the blender. So you just want to give them, saute them a little bit until they get a little color or at least some of the flavors. So in here, I got two cans of black beans. I leave a little bit of the brine in the beans. You don't want to take all of it out because I'm not going to add salt to this. So you're going to get a little bit of the, of the, the sodium from the brine. If you don't want any of the brine, you can wash out the beans and just do it like that. So, two cans of black beans. Some veggies. Almost done. In the black bean mixture, nice big bunch of cilantro. And we're going to add that in there. Okay. Two limes. I like mine a little bit more acidic. You don't have to use two. I believe I told you in the recipe you can use one, but I like the lime, so I improvise a little bit and I'm putting two inside. So we're just going to squeeze the lime juice. Sometimes if the limes if the limes are a little hard because sometimes, sometimes that's just the way it is. Today I got lucky, I found really, really good limes. Uh, but when they are a little hard, put them in the microwave 10 seconds. Wait a second, cut them in half, it'll release all the juice. Works every time. Okay, so, now that we have that in there, <coughs> again, I'm not going to add any salt or pepper to this. So you don't want to make them too dark, you don't want to make them too light, just enough where you get a little bit of flavor out of them and you don't have the, the raw taste of, of garlic and peppers and onions. On the recipe that I gave you guys, there's a little bit of olive oil. I already used some for the sautéing, so I'm only going to put just a little bit in there. And that's it. So, now we're just going to blend this really, really good. Uh, move it around a little bit.
and we're going to let this mix really, really good. The olive oil in here is going to help thicken this a little bit. Okay, peanut chips are done. And basically, not too crispy. Let it take all just a few minutes in the oven, and you're set to go. So, we got our dip. I'm going to try not to burn my fingers. Now we're just going to put this, of course I made a mess. One second guys. Okay, so I usually just put a bowl in the middle here, and we're going to take some of these chips. Now, you don't have to use pita. If you guys like the Tostitos, you want to use wraps. I take wraps, sometimes I cut them the same way, I cut them in triangles, and I put them right in the oven, just like I did now. They cook just the same, they're a little bit lighter, not so much starch, and that's what that will look like. Next thing, so, I don't know how many people have made quinoa. To be honest with you, I didn't stop making quinoa until probably about seven years ago, eight years ago. It really is um, a very light and uh, just delicious item. Um, it's better than the starch in the rice. If you, anybody has gluten issues or whatever, it is actually extremely good for that. <coughs> so, what I did earlier is I made quinoa ahead of time because you need to cool for this uh, particular recipe. It's very, very, very simple. The same way for most of you, the way I make my rice is I always put two cups of water to one cup of rice. It's the same thing for the quinoa. The only difference is you're going to bring up that water to a boil. I just put maybe a pinch of salt in there. Once it boils, I lower it down, add the quinoa in, mix it, cover it, put it on very low. Once the water evaporates, it's done. So, you all know what, pretty much what, if you don't know what quinoa looks like, it's like that, it's little pearls, similar to couscous, and when it's done, it looks like that. It opens up, it's really, really good, it's awesome. Okay, so, as far as the recipe, in a bowl, what we're going to do is first we're going to make the dressing for this. So, for the dressing, I have rice wine vinegar. And I believe it's a half a cup, thereabout. You could put a little bit more because on this recipe, I'm doubling it because I'm feeding everybody today, as always. So, rice wine vinegar. Then, we're going to take honey. If you don't have honey, or you can't have honey, you can use agave, you can use uh, a Splenda, you can use almost anything. Honey, it's natural, it's got great products for you, most people can have it, but if there's a problem with the sugar, or anything like that, you can use the agave nectar. So, basically, we're just going to put about a cup of honey in there, a little bit of olive oil, And we're going to mix this until it's combined. Once the honey starts to melt down a little bit, then you are good to go. Shouldn't take long, just going to whisk it for a few seconds. Just like so. 
Okay, so now, to this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the quinoa that I made into this mixture. And to that, I cut up an entire pineapple. For this recipe, you need one pineapple. For the one that I gave you, uh, that you have, uh, it's probably about a half a pineapple. So, pineapple, mango, one mango should be suffice, and blueberries. And then we're going to take chopped mint. Uh, you only need about a quarter of a cup. If you put too much, it's going to be way overpowering. And we're just going to gently mix this all together. Now, this fruit salad is really, really good with the quinoa, especially with that, that a little acidity from the, uh, the rice vinegar and the sweetness from the honey. And it'll stay in your refrigerator for up to about five or six days. This is great for breakfast. Like I said, I just started making quinoa a couple of years ago, eight years ago. And it's actually become one of my favorite things to have for breakfast besides oatmeal. And I love this, especially in the summertime because it's just so refreshing. And then we finish it off with a little mint on top. And there you have it. So you got a, a quinoa fruit salad and dip and pita chips.